then we have the glucose molecule. Just got to get it right. So I'm not bothering to show where the hydroxyls go because it's going to take me quite a long time to do that. One, two, three, four, five, six. So as I've said, there's an aldehyde there, an aldehyde has that sort of structure. And what happens is the aldehyde comes round and bites the tail of the sugar, if you like, and it attacks that carbon there. Not this one, because if it attacked that carbon, you'd have a seven-membered ring, and seven-membered rings are not as stable energetically as six-membered rings. Six-membered rings, six rings are much more stable. So we end up with a ring system that looks like that, and that's called a chair configuration. The other way that could work is like that. And that's a boat configuration. That is not an energetically stable form of the six-membered ring of this type. The chair form is much more stable simply because the hydroxyl groups bash into each other if you have a boat form. So it's the chair form that the glucose molecule forms. Uh, this here is the anomeric carbon, which I'll talk about again in a minute. Uh, and there's that oxygen left over from, uh, not from the aldehyde, from the, from the hydroxyl group there. So when that happens, uh, a water molecule is released. So that reaction can run in that direction. If you get sugar, put it in water, it can ring open and it can then uh, reform this uh, ring form. So you get a, uh, an equilibrium set up between the ring form and the straight chain form in solution, which has certain consequences for what happens at the anomeric carbon, but doesn't need to concern us with wood science.